Hey, Techno Studs. In this video, we're gonna start laying that foundation to what IP version six addresses look like and how they function, some different types of IP addresses. That base foundation knowledge that you'll need to know for subnetting and working with IP version six. So let's jump into it. In this video, we'll start out by talking about the reasons for IP version six. Then we're gonna get into some IP version six formatting. We'll talk about the prefix and the prefix length, and then we'll wrap things up by talking about the shorthand notation. The huge driving factor behind IP version six is just the need for more addresses. As we mentioned along the way, our needs kept growing and we had to create other ways to stretch out IP version four, but we have to get away from it. So IP version six is really what we need to transition to. And over the next few years, we'll make more and more progress towards that. The only reason why IP version four is hanging around as long as it has, is there's still some things that are holding on to that IP version four communication. So as soon as we break that boundary though, we're going to most likely switch everything over to IP version six, and that will be the way of the future. And they just threw a ton of bits at it. For every time you add another bit, it doubles the amount of possibilities there are. So you've got this huge amount, 10 to the 128th power, huge amount of possibilities, allowing us to do a lot more and get a lot more granular with how we want to manage our different networks. So although increasing address space was a huge motivating factor to come up with IP version six and is gonna be the driver for us to transition, there's also other advantages as well. There are some features that they've worked in to improve security, to improve quality of service or make better performance. To, there's just a bunch of uh, other features that have been worked into IP version six and they've done away with some of the old architect of IP version four too, which is really going to enhance things. Let's talk about the formatting of an IP version six address. So first thing that you may notice is there's both numbers and letters. That should be a clue that we're dealing with hexadecimal numbers. So this is, these are hexadecimal numbers here. All right. And we know that a hexadecimal number has four bits behind it. So each one of these is a hexadecimal number, but it's also a nibble. So it's composed of all these little nibbles. Uh, nibbles are grouped up in fours, or there's four hexadecimal numbers here. We call this a hextet. So uh, we grouped it up in these groups of four like this, just so that it's a little bit easier to read. And we separate that out by colons here to once again, make this an easier number to read. Uh, so we see that there's colons in between each one of these, and we got hexadecimal numbers with these hextets in between those colons. One thing to note here is these are lowercase, and that is the recommended according to the RFCs. So if you look at the RFCs, these are supposed to be lowercase, although not, not you won't always see that being uh, used out there. There's a lot of equipment that I've seen that are actually using uppercase that aren't following the RFCs. Here's just another view of that formatting. You can see the hexadecimal numbers here with the little nibbles here, and then the, uh, all the binaries numbers represented there. So this is just another format that you can use. Uh, this is only showing half the address. So this format didn't allow me to put it all on one slide. So this is only showing the first uh, 64 bits of it. We also have the prefix. The prefix is essentially the IP version six's CIDR notation. So this tells you how many bits is assigned to the network, or sometimes it's just representing the network that's being handed to you. So in this case right here, it's 64. So we see that 64 would be the first half of this address. So this, are, this side is the network bits, and this side are the host bits for this particular address. And 64 is the default and the standard and the recommended way to use it. it really, at this point in time, there's no need to use 
anything other than a slash 64 for your networks. So you really should be using slash 64 unless there's a really good reason not to. IP version 6 numbers can be very large and a little cumbersome to deal with. And because the address space is so huge, a lot of times you're dealing with just a lot of zeros. So one thing we could do is we could remove a lot of the zeros and really not affect the readability. In fact, increase the readability of this number. So the first trick here for shorthand notation of IP version 6 address is we can remove any leading zeros. Leading zeros are the zeros at the front of the number. We can't remove this zero right here, uh, at least not for what we're talking about yet. Uh, and so what we can do is we can remove all of these leading zeros of all of these numbers to condense this down. And this is what we end up with by removing those numbers. Now there is one other trick that we can do, and that is if there's two zeros that are next to each other now, we can actually condense that just into a colon. And you can see this double colon here. This is it's condensed now. You can only do this once though within here because we know that we, we can reconstruct this at this point. We know that there's supposed to be eight hextets. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hextets. But when we condense it down like this, I can count these out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, so I know that this represents two more that are in there. And I can fill that in now and assume that this is what it is. If I were to condense another one somewhere else within the address, then you wouldn't know if where the con condensing is happening at and it would be really confusing. So you can only do this trick once within an IP address. In this video, we talked about the reasons for IP version 6. We took a look at the IP version 6 formatting. We took a look at the prefix and the, we figured out how to condense this down into some sort of shorthand notation to make it easier to read.